In this video, I'm going to take you through LastPass, a password manager which will remember all your passwords so you don't have to. I'm Louise Elizabeth and welcome to Every Bit Helps. I really hope you enjoyed this video today and if you do then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button and share if you feel that others may benefit. Also please do head over to my website at www.everybithelps.co.uk where related blog posts is also available. If you're anything like me, you'll find remembering passwords a nightmare. As the need for more complex and varied passwords increases, the harder they are to remember. And some people will even opt to write all these down in a notebook or on their mobile phones. With LastPass, once you save and add a password, you'll always have it whenever you need it. So logging in is fast and easy. And you'll secure it all with a master password, which will be the only password that you'll hopefully ever need to remember. LastPass can help you to generate more secure passwords for ones that you've previously created. And you can add payment cards and addresses in there too, so that you can simply fill all your payment and shipping details in when you're shopping online. Another feature that I'm going to be showing you, which I personally think is great, is something called emergency access. This is where you can allow trusted friends and family access to your LastPass account, and therefore all your passwords. And this is just in the case of the event of an emergency or a crisis. LastPass is available as an extension across a multitude of browsers, such as Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Brave. It's also available as an app on the iPhone or Android, so that you only have to save a password once, and then you can use it across all your different types of devices. And there's a free subscription that comes with a 30-day trial of their premium plan, and then you can choose to upgrade to paid memberships with a couple of different payment plans. Now, I've personally signed up with a family plan on my personal account. Between my partner and I, we have lots of accounts and passwords between our business, YouTube channel, and cryptocurrencies, which we struggle to keep track of. So it's great that we can both access the site, also allowing access to others in case something did go wrong. Now to sign up, please feel free to use my link in the summary below. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go through and start creating an account. So if I click on to get last pass free, what I then need to do is add in my email address. Enter in a master password. Now this does have to be quite complex with lots of different requirements in here. And because this password isn't stored by LastPass, what you might wanna do is put in a reminder in case you ever need to restore your account. And then click on to sign up, it's free. And once your account has been created, you'll then be prompted to download the extension. If you use more than one browser, you'll need to download the extension to each different one so that you can sync LastPass across all your different types of browsers. And as you can see, LastPass is now appearing in my toolbar. Now it's actually appearing in black at the moment and that's because I've not logged in. So when you're not logged in, it's kind of this gray black color and when it's red, it's working. Now, if you've got a Mac, you can also download the app from the App Store. This is just so that you can easily access LastPass when you're not necessarily connected to the internet. And if you're storing on an iPhone or an Android, you'll need to make sure that you follow this additional step. So if you go across to your settings on your phone and go down to passwords and accounts, press on autofill passwords, and then you need to make sure that it's switched on and that LastPass is checked. Now what I'm gonna do is just log into my account. And from here, you have the option for the Chrome extension to remember your email and also remember your password. So obviously, if you're using this in a kind of a shared environment on a shared computer, you won't actually want to ensure that you remember the password as someone else could then get access to all of this. However, if you're just using it on your own personal machine and you don't wanna to have to enter in that master password every time, you can obviously tick that box. But I'm just gonna go ahead and click on to login. And as you can see, it then comes up with a let's get started. I'm just gonna click on to remind me later, but you can see that this is now appearing as a red icon on my toolbar. So now let's just open up our vault. Now to start actually adding passwords into LastPass, you can do this manually, which I'm gonna take you through shortly. Or alternatively, if you already have a password manager, you can import them across to save you having to do these individually. The way that you do that is if you head over to the bottom section here and go to more options, 
then go to advanced and then go to import. From here is all the available sources that you can import across. Now, if your option isn't in the list, you may need to add your password in manually. So how do we start adding in your passwords? Well, the first thing you wanna do is navigate over to the site that you wanna start adding in. Now, in this example, I'm gonna use Twitter. And at the moment, you can see you've got the last pass icon appearing within my password. Now, the reason why that's not showing up as red is that it doesn't currently know what to do with this section here. So at the moment, I haven't saved my password in there, so it can't find anything to do. So all I'm gonna do is simply log into my site, and it's now asking me whether or not I'd like to add this account into LastPass. So what I'm gonna do is click on to add. And it states that it's all set. So we'll just head over to our vault. And we can now see that Twitter is now appearing within our all items or also appearing under our passwords. Now at this point, you may wanna change your password from something that you manually created a little while ago to something that's slightly more secure, made up of random characters, numbers, and symbols. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. The first way is if we go onto Twitter here and you click onto this little icon here that it's a bit like a spanner. And from here, you can auto change your password. So in here, it will attempt to change your password to a strong generated password and save it to your vault. Now, just to make you aware, this hasn't actually worked for me every single time on every single site. However, there is another way that we can go ahead and change our password to something more secure. And within Twitter is that if I go to actually change my password, what it will do is ask me to enter in my current password. Now I can actually use LastPass to enter in this information by right clicking, going down to LastPass, go to Twitter and fill. So because I have that information over on LastPass, it'll fill in my current password. Now if I want to generate a new secure password, I can click on this little icon here. And from here, I can generate a new password. Now, if I just click on to show options, on here, I can increase the password length so that it's more characters, or I can select it to be easy to say, easy to read, all characters, and I can also include symbols in here as well. Now, one thing to mention is if you are always going to be automatically filling in these passwords online, then by sure, make this as complex as you like. However, if you are at some point going to have to manually enter in these passwords, then it's worth making this something a little bit more simple. What I'm just gonna do now is click on to fill password. And it will then automatically fill my new password and confirm my password. And at the same time, it's now coming up, asking me whether or not I wanna update my password into LastPass. So I'm gonna click on to update. And you could then go away and repeat this process across all your different types of accounts. Now just heading back to the vault. Within the vault, obviously, we've been looking at passwords. However, you also have the ability to create secure notes and you can create folders within these notes as well and just simply type these in. You also have the ability to enter in addresses. So with regards to addresses, this is so that you're, when you're going into things like shopping sites or anything that asks you for your personal address, it will automatically fill that information in online. Now we'll just have a look at payment cards. And what we'll do is we'll add in a payment card. So I'm gonna click onto the add item in the bottom right hand corner here. Now once you've entered in all your information, you then have this notes section in here as well. Now this is really handy for me personally. I do travel around quite a lot. So in here I could put in something like lost or stolen card, telephone number that I would need to contact, just so that I have everything all in one place, just in case of any kind of eventuality like that. So that card has now been added and it's appearing under my payment cards. What I'm now gonna do is head over to a site where I'm actually gonna be paying for something online. Then when you're ready to pay for something online, and in this example, I'm gonna be using the online travel company, traveler.com. If you click onto the icon beside the card number details, it will then show you that newly created payment card and I can simply click on to fill, click on to okay, and that information will then automatically populate into here. So that's really great that you don't have to have the card physically with you to pay for something online. Now I'm just gonna head back into my vault and you can do exactly the same thing with your bank accounts in here as well. Then one of the really great features is the emergency access section. In here, you can allow other people access to your accounts, as it says, in case of an emergency. 
So the first thing you'll see is people I trust and people who trust me. Now, if you want to add in a contact, what you want to do is click onto the icon in the bottom right hand corner. And then here you can type in their email address. Now, the next thing you're asked for is a wait time. So a wait time is if my emergency contact requests access to my account, it will send me an email and a timer starts. And I have, and in this example, I have 48 hours to respond. And if I don't, then they will have access into my account. So you can choose whatever time frame you like from this drop down. And then you would simply click across to send your invite across. So that was my walkthrough of LastPass, a password manager that remember all your passwords so you don't have to. I think it's a pretty good system in the fact that you don't actually have to remember all these passwords and you can make those passwords that you use online even more complex. I really like the emergency access feature. It's really handy to know that in case anything went wrong with me personally, someone else would be able to access my account and just get access to the different types of online systems that I use. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at www.everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.